All right, Shalom. Let me start by giving all praise, honor, and glory due unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Raka, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David. Yahweh is the true name of the Heavenly Father, the world calls God. Yahweh Shai is the true name of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son. Who this world refers to is Jesus Christ, Bahashem, as in the name of Kaha Kodash, is the Holy Spirit. And also shall to the 144,000 men that's laboring in the street for the sake of Yahweh Shem Shai. And shall to the innumerable multitude, men, women, and children that may be listening and all truth and sincerity shall alarm. It's your brother Kodash coming back here with another video to the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem Shai from the GMS Salt, GMS West Palm Camp. The title of this video is going to be Revelation chapter 1 breakdown. I'm going to go through this uh, chapter here, pull a few precepts, of course. And our Lord will in this video it is edifying. All right. Uh, so this is Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. It says, The revelation of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, which the Most High gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by an angel unto his servant John. All right. Let's go into that word. Uh, Revelation here and the uh, etymology because that word re is to uh, like bring back and uh, the relation are right, like covering the veil. But uh, Revelation it says in the etymology online it says the closure of information or knowledge it says. Disclosure of information or knowledge to man by a divine or supernatural agency. All right, this was, and the Lord gave John these visions. Uh, and said said it was signified, and he sent and signified it by an angel unto the servant John. All right, so an angel had revealed these things unto John. All right, and it says, uh, another definition that says, Revelation is the, the speech act of making something evident, an enlightening or astonishing, astonishing disclosure. And it says, Revelation, the last book of the New Testament, contains visionary descriptions of heaven and of conflicts between good and evil and of the end of the world. All right. So let me go back here. It says, the revelation of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, which Yahweh Shai, I mean, which the Most High Yahweh gave unto him to give unto his servant, servants, things which must surely come to pass or right, you can even say uh, which the powers gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John you know so really the most high you know sent an angel to give John these visions alright and before we move further all right, the revelation of Yahweh Shai. All right, you know, we also know that he sprang from the tribe of Judah. All right, Revelation, uh, Hebrews 7 and 14 says, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. All right, so he came, uh, he sprang out of the tribe of Judah, all right, which concerned nothing concerning priesthood. All right, because you know, like you go read further in that verse in that chapter, all right, through Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai. You know, now we're all priests in the all right, all 12 tribes are priests now. All right, we can all do priestly duties, all right, it's making sacrifices, you know, spiritual sacrifices. That's what we do now, you know, with these lessons going out to the highways and byways, all right. Uh, but I'm going to read it again. It says, For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah. All right. And you can tell that Matthew, the 
Matthew, the first chapter. All right, we go into the lineage. All right, because David, King David, was indeed of the tribe of Judah. All right, and Yahweh is sprang from the lineage of King David. All right, we go into Romans, the first chapter, in the third verse. Let me just pull that up real quick. Romans 1 and 3 says, Concerning his son, Yehosha Bashiach, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh. And we all know David was of the tribe of Judah as well. All right, verse 2, Revelations 1 and 2 says, Who bear record of the word of the Most High and of the testimony of Yehosha HaMashiach and of all things that he saw. Verse 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. All right, so it says, Blessed is he that readeth. All right, this uh, readeth. Let me go to it here. Strong's G314, Anagonosko, Anagonosko. And it says to distinguish between, to recognize, to know accurately. All right, so to understand. All right. It says, Blessed is he that readeth and he that hear the words of this prophecy. All right, so blessed is he that understand these, these scriptures, God, right? because especially in the book of Revelations, it's a mystery, man. All right. It's a mystery uh, who the Gentiles are. All right. It's a mystery who Esau Edom is. You know? There's a mystery. It's a mystery to what the uh, MOTB is. All right. The Bible is full of mysteries. All right. But the elect is going to get the understanding. <coughs> This is Proverbs 4 and 7. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. All right. So via the Holy Spirit, you're going to get understanding of the scriptures. All right. The Holy Spirit is going to allow you to understand the scriptures. All right. So Revelations 1 and 3 again says, Blessed is he that readeth, that understand." It says, and they, they hear the words of this prophecy. All right, so it's important to hear, have those spiritual ears to be able to hear and understand the words of these prophecies. And also it says, and keep those things which are written therein. And I just want to see what it says for keep. Strong's G, 5083, Tereo, Tereo. And it says, to attend to carefully, take care of, to guard, to keep one in the state in which he is, to observe. All right, it says, to observe, watch, hold fast. All right, scripture says, to uh, hold fast was the, uh, on what thou hast learned. That no man take thy crown. Yep. Revelations 3 and 11 says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. All right. And what do we have? We have this truth. All right. So, read Revelations 1 and 3 again it says, Blessed is he that readeth and keep uh, slacking. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand all right so to keep this or to keep this understanding man all right keep this wisdom knowledge and understanding all right and it's important to hear but as the scripture says you know be not a hearer only but also a doer of the word all right james 1 and 22 be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves all right if you're a hearer of the word only and not a doer so you hear that you're not supposed to be smoking weed smoking black and milds all right you hear that 
you're not supposed to have dreadlocks. You hear, you know, that you're supposed to keep these laws as you can. You're not supposed to eat pork, shrimp, crab, lobster, get lineups. But you're not doing these things. You're only deceiving yourself, man. All right. But Revelations 1 and 4 says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Yahweh Shai Mashiach who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood alright Yahweh Shai washed us from sins in his own blood First John 1 and 7 says, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, his son, cleanses us from all sins. All right, so we're being diligent in this truth. All right, seeking the Lord in truth and sincerity. All right, following after the light of Yahweh Shai. All right, then you your sins are going to be uh, blotted out as the scripture says the scripture says repent ye therefore that your sins may be blotted out alright so when you walk into the true paths alright by Yahweh Shai making that uh, sacrifice on the cross your sins will be blotted out alright and let me see here This is uh, Hebrews 9 and nine, and I'm going to start at verse 13. It says, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctified to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of a Mashiach, who through the eternal spirit offer himself without spot to the Most High, Purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living power. All right, so Yahweh Shai died on that cross. All right, as that unspotted, quote unquote, lamb, not a literal lamb, but he's referred to as the lamb. All right, him dying on that cross to forgive, like it says in Acts 5 and 31. All right, he died for, for the forgiveness. Excuse me, he died for the forgiveness of the children of Israel. All right, but really the elect of the nation of Israel. Okay. Revelations 1 and 5 again, it says, And from Yahweh Shai Bashiach, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. So he's washing the sins of the elect. All right, verse 6, it says, And have made us kings and priests unto the Most High uh, and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. All right, I really kind of read that wrong because uh, it says unto God and his Father. All right, this is really like... Uh, Really, Yahweh, uh, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shai, all right, made us and have made us kings and priests unto the powers and His Father, all right? Because Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, you know, they're uh, uh, on the same accord, but they're two separate entities, man. All right, Yahweh Shai, he's he's a deity as well. All right, because when you go into this word, God here, it's a uh, theos. Strong's G twenty three sixteen. Theos. Theos. 
and it says a a deity a supreme divinity it says a god a general name of deities it says the godhead it says god the father the first in the trinity uh hamashiach the second person of the trinity uh, we know that trinity is off though you know because uh, you got the Father, Yahweh Shai, you got Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit. Three separate uh, three separate things, okay, but they're all on one accord. All right, the Holy Spirit really being the angels. All right. So it says, and have made us kings and priests unto the powers and his father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. All right. So made us kings and priests. Let me get a quick priest up here. Uh, Second Peter is one and seven. Uh, wrong one. Second Peter's. First Peter's. Two and nine. God says, but ye are a chosen, a chosen generation. A royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. All right, so the Lord has made all 12 tribes, you know, to be priests. All right, now we're able to offer these spiritual facts sacrifices. All right, as I mentioned earlier, you know, these doing these lessons. All right. All 12 tribes now, you know, we're able to burn incense, all right? All right, we're able to make these sacrifices unto, uh, unto Yahweh Bashmi Al Shah. All right, Lord willing, they are acceptable sacrifices that we are doing. All right, we go out to the highways and byways, we're making our bodies as a living sacrifice. All right, we're not literally burning our bodies, but we're doing these spiritual sacrifices, man. Romans 12 and 1, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of the Most High, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto the Most High, which is your reasonable service. All right, so this is our reasonable service, all right, to put our bodies on the line for Yahweh Shah, you know, as he put his body on the line. This is 1 Peter 2, verse 5. It says, Ye also, as lively stones, are built up, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood. Alright, so we're building up the house of David. Alright. It says, and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the most high by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Okay. So, you know, so that's a really a direct precept right there. All right, because Yahweh Shai, you know, Yahweh through Yahweh Shai, or should I say, uh, yeah, Yahweh Shai through Yahweh, you know, either either or, you know, Yahweh Shai, because let me read that again. The point I was getting that. First Peter two and five says, "Ye also, as living, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Most High by Yahweh Shai Mashiach." All right, so our sacrifices are accepted, you know, through Yahweh Shai. It says, Revelation one and six, have made us kings and priests unto the powers and His Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever, amen. All right, so we're made kings and priests through Yahweh Shai, man. All right, verse 7, Revelation 1 and 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds. All right, whose is he? Yahweh Shai. It says, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. So all these different nations are going to be wailing. All right, it says, Behold, he cometh with clouds. 
All right, what's these clouds? These clouds are the chariots. Uh, Psalms 104, verse 3 says, Who lay up the beings of his chambers in the water, who maketh the clouds his chariots. So these so-called UFOs, these are uh, the chariots, these are the vehicles of the Heavenly Father. It says, Who maketh the clouds his chariot, who walketh upon the wing of the wind. All right, so we see clouds a lot of times in the scriptures that's referred to these chariots man all right which is all which are so-called ufos all right and i said the lord is coming back with a chariot all right let me get this here uh acts chapter one and starting at verse nine it says that when he had spoken these things while they beheld he was taken up in a cloud received him out of their sight all right so uh, let me actually start up at verse six acts one and six it says when they there therefore were come together they asked of him saying lord wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of the kingdom to israel and he said unto them it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his heart uh part what the father has put in his power but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and ye shall be witness, witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So that proves reincarnation as well, because now we're in the uttermost, uttermost parts of the earth. You know, Lord, whether we those men, all right, after the Holy Spirit has come upon you, all right, you know, the the Holy Spirit is upon us now, you know that's how we have this understanding. I right, started with the apostles and the elders, all right, and pretty soon, pretty soon we already have a, a form of spiritual power now, all right. But pretty soon we're, the Lord is going to enhance that spiritual power, man, all right, to the uttermost parts of the earth. It says, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. And a cloud received him out of their sight. So a chariot came and beamed up Yahweh Shai. It says, And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, these two angels, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Yahweh Shai, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. As ye have seen him go into heaven. Alright. So the Lord is going to return. Via the chariots man. Just like he left on the chariot. He's going to return on the chariot. It says behold he cometh with clouds. With the chariot. It says. And every eye shall see him. And also they which pierced him. So in the reincarnation. Those that pierced Yahweh Shai while he was on the cross. They are going to be here to. They're going to be here when Yahweh Shah returns, man. All right, which is very soon, man. All right, it says, and that's according to prophecy. All right, we measure the time diligently through prophecy. It says, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him, even so, amen. It says, verse 8, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. The Almighty, all right, because the Lord Yahweh Shai, He was here from the beginning, all right. <coughs> it says in John, the first chapter, all right, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, all right, because when you go to Revelation 19, chapter, He said, It says, He is the Word of God, roughly paraphrasing, man, all right. Verse 9, Revelation 1 and 9, it says, I, John, who also am your brother. And companion in, in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Yahweh Shai Mashiach was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. So, John the Revelator, all right, he was on the isle of the Patmos receiving these visions. It says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia 
unto Ephesus, Ephesus, unto some some Rhina, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. All right, so these were the seven churches. It says, verse twelve, and I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden golden candlesticks which represented uh the seven churches it says and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the son of man clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle his head and his hairs were white like wool as white as snow and his eyes were as a flame of fire so this is this was uh the vision that John saw, which was Yahweh Shai, all right, proving that Yahweh Shai had a body, came in the flesh. Okay, anybody that said that Yahweh Shai didn't come in the flesh, they are anti Amashiach, all right. All right, so he had a girdle down, uh, jumping back to 13, said, clothed with a garment down to the foot. So he had a long garment and a and a gird about the paps with a golden girdle. So he had a a a, a golden belt. All right. It says his head, his head and his hairs were white like wool. All right. So he had white woolly hair. All right. You know, woolly is uh sort of like nappy, like sheep hair. All right. You know, and that's how the so-called so-called Negro's hair is today. All right, it says, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Eyes were as a flame of fire, you know, representing one, because he drunk wine, and and that fierceness, all right, the anger. It says, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice as the sound of many waters. You see, so his feet like unto fine brass, man. And it says, as if they burned in a furnace. All right, so if you take brass, which is a derivative of brown, and you burn it in the furnace, it's going to be very dark, dark brown. All right, damn near looking black. All right, but very dark brown. It says, and the voice as the voice of many waters, meaning he had a very loud voice. All right. You hear oceans, ocean waters crashing together, waves crashing together. All right, it's very loud. So that was the voice of Yahweh Shai, very loud. And, you know, and it said that he was speaking to thousands of people when he was on a boat, you know, roughly paraphrasing the scripture. All right. So he had to have a loud, projective voice. All right. And just as, you know, Yahweh Shai has a, has a body, so does the Heavenly Father. All right, also referred to as the Ancient of Days. Uh, Daniel 7 and 9 says, But I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. All right, Ancient of Days, no, no beginning, no ending. It says, Whose garment was white as snow. And the hair on his hair like the pure wool, his throne like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. All right, so proven there that also the Most High Yahweh has a body as well. All right, and of course, Yahweh Shah, right, he's going to come back as an angelic force, man. All right, Revelation 1 and 16, it says, and in his hand, and in, in, in his right hand, seven stars and out of his mouth when a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength all right that brightness that that yahweh Shai is coming with all right because he's coming with uh very uh he's coming very bright man right? all right representing what representing the wisdom all right says out of his mouth with a sharp two-edged sword okay 
Because this word is like a, compared to as a two-edged sword. All right? This wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All right? What it says, wisdom, face, shine. This is Ecclesiastes 8 and 1. Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. All right? So the latter end of verse 16 it says, And his countenance was as the sun shining shineth was as the sun shineth in his strength all right so that wisdom verse 17 says and when i saw him i fell at his feet as dead and he laid his right hand upon me saying uh, saying unto me fear not i am the first and the last i am he that liveth and was dead and behold i am alive forevermore all right because yahweh shy he died on that cross, but he rose up three days later. And now he's now he's immortal. Or he's always been immortal. You know, but he had to die on that cross, you know, but him being rose back risen back up, you know, he's really immortal, man. And now he's gonna be alive forevermore. He's never gonna uh die for a day or two and raise back up. Now he's immortal. Now you can really say that he's immortal. All right, it says, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. It says, write the things which thou hast seen. It says, write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. All right, so that explains verse 16 what the, uh, what the seven stars were in his right hand, all right, representing the angels. All right, you know, so with that, so with that, you know, Lord willing, this video is edifying, you know, and also let me uh, touch it back on verse 18 real quick. It says, Revelation 1 and 18, it says, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, I'm on, and have the keys of hell and of death. You know, so all things was given unto the power of Yahweh Shai. All right. So with that, you know, Lord willing, this video was edifying to the elect of the nation of Israel. I'm going to close with that and give all praise, honor, and glory due unto Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakar, Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David. To the next lesson, say Shalom. And I'll bubble ball, shall I?